there we go. Let's get my mic up here. Hey everybody, Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Hope everybody's having a good Thursday night. Finally made it here. Still got one baby that's still awake, but babies are kind of iffy. I try to put my kids to bed before I get on live streams. So I've got a five, almost six month old, and he is being disagreeable tonight. So he's awake. You might hear some cocoa melon in the background. Can't do anything about it. Because he don't want to sleep, and I don't want to be up all night long trying to live stream for everybody. So hope everybody's having a good night. Hope everybody's enjoying their, uh, well, almost weekend. But anyway, hello Scott, Scotty, hello Mars, hello Goblin, hello everybody. Anybody else? Hello to everybody who's watching me tonight live on YouTube. Bedbug Show. Question, if a flat layer of bug glue is in front of a bed bug, do they try to walk through it? No. I mean, I might. They might accidentally do it. But, um, they're not going to intentionally do it. Bugs? Bed bugs don't, I mean... Alright. Alright. So the way that I kill bed bugs is I use non-repellent pesticides on the mattress, on the box spring, so that when the bed bugs try to crawl to get to you, they die. If you're going to try to put a barrier between you and the bed bug, put something that they'll actually crawl through. Like I said, a, a chemical that they don't recognize as a pesticide works really well, like Crossfire is really, really effective because they don't know any better, and they continue to come out to feed, and they die. That's the most effective way to get rid of bed bugs. You know, people put interceptors and uh, mattress encasements and glue boards and all kinds of stuff down to try to catch bed bugs, but ultimately the best way to get rid of them is to just poison them, kill them, use pesticides and kill them. That's very, very, very effective. Um, but anyway, that's what I recommend. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to be on tonight streaming because... I, uh, I do have a baby that's up. My wife might actually need me to help with the baby. So if, uh, if I'm not here for a long time tonight, depending on how many people I have stopped by and asked questions, I will do the best I can to, uh, to accommodate you guys. But, you know, ultimately I am a dad and uh, I do these live streams and it does a little bit hinder a little bit of my family time with everybody. So, but anyway, I got to scratch my head. Look at all that gray hair. Look at that. I got all that gray hair right there. I'm getting old. I might have to just accept my fate and I'm getting old. Well, older. I don't feel old. Coco Melon. Coco Melon! I tried numerous times to make water bottle and baking soda sugar traps with a bowl under. Yeah, CO2 traps don't work. CO2 traps are a scam. There's this dude on YouTube. Um, I don't want to promote him. I don't need to promote him. Uh, he's got millions of views. Everybody's seen his videos. Some dude that goes out there and shows how to mix sugar water and baking soda and stuff like that to make a bed bug trap. They don't work. They're not effective. They don't work. But he's got millions of views. There's so many. Let me see. Dot com. Let me show you. Catch bed bugs. I think that's the search that I used before to find him. Bed bug trap. Yeah, they're using yeast. Let's see. Yeast, sugar, um, there he is. There he is. So let's share the screen. This one right here is the most common one that's seen. It's a guy named Williams, uh, Joel Z. Williams. He mixes sugar and yeast and he makes a, a CO2 trap to try to catch bed bugs. That's the one that's most common that people have seen. It's been up seven years. This is not, these are all scams. They, the only reason these videos are up 
is because they're trying to trick you into doing this and they just want views. They want YouTube views. Like it's 1.9 million views. Homemade bed bug trap. Yeah, this stuff doesn't work. These are just all, oh, there, that guy right there, he don't know what he's talking about. He don't know nothing. You know, truly the most successful bed bug trap. You know, that guy right there, you watch him, he'll tell you how to get rid of bed bugs. But anyway. Uh, what is Coco Melon? Coco Melon. Y'all don't know what Coco Melon is? Coco Melon. That's Coco Melon. See? I'm not going to play them because I'll get copyright strikes and stuff. But that's Coco Melon. That's what my little baby upstairs really loves to watch on TV. So he's watching it. Basically, they just sing nursery rhymes like Mary Had a Little Lamb and Row, Row, Row Your Boat and the wheels on the bus and stuff. And it doesn't bother me like, you know, some of the baby shows they got on TV nowadays. When is the Bat Bug episode? I got lots of Bat Bug episodes. Um, in fact, let's go back to my channel. And while you're there, subscribe. It's uh, youtube.com slash greenacrespc. And acres is spelled A-K-E-R-S, just like here. See? Acres. A-K-E-R-S. It's greenacrespc. Um, here are my videos, all right? There's my most recent one. That's the one I just uploaded, When a Bed Bug is Not a Bed Bug. And then one from last week, When Bed Bugs Kill. Oh, we got a call. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. How are you tonight? Hey, Jason. I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. Doing all right. What's okay. going on? I'm not really good. I'm kind of freaking out. <laughs> okay, that's the best time. So, yeah, yeah. So, I actually, um, you had helped me out on Facebook. I, I, I wrote you before. Um, and anyway, this is kind of a two-part thing. Um I've used Crossfire now twice in the house. I'm still getting bit. I've not seen, I mean, there is not one sign of a bed bug anywhere that I can find. I've not seen specs. I've not seen casings. I've not seen anything okay. other than getting bit. And it may not I be mean, and I have, I've, I've bought a professional steamer. I have bought, I mean, I've done everything I can, and I've and I've used Crossfire twice, and I've actually bought another one to do this weekend. Okay. Um, I, well, it sounds only, to me the, like you don't have bed bugs. Well, something's biting me, <laughs> and I don't know what it is. Right. Um, because, like I said, I and I've even on my bed, I've got you know white linens, I've got white everything, I've like where I could see anything possibly, but. This is kind of twofold also. My father is in a nursing home. Okay. And every time I go over there, like, I will be fine. And then I'll get, like, several little spots on my hands, like, where I've been bit. That they're calling them no-seams. Uh, the nurses are no like, yeah, are. we can't see them. Yeah. They're like, but we, they, we think they're in the carpet. So I'm being real careful, trying not to bring anything back home with me. I am actually spraying my bottom of my feet before I get back in the car, like knees down with alcohol. You know, um, I guess my question too is like, how do you keep from bringing anything or tracking anything back into your car? Um, and um, I don't know what's biting me. Well, what's at home. <laughs> I mean, I treat my car, but I mean, it's common for me to treat my car. I treat my car all the time Yeah. because if I don't, I will bring them home. Um, today I had a, actually a, a scare. I was in a house I was treating four bed bugs. Now, there is the possibility that, I mean, did you, when you first treated for bed bugs, did you ever have a sign that you actually had bed bugs at all except for bug bites? Nope. Just, just the bed bites. Like, I, I've never seen, there's like not, not one sign. I mean, and I have, like, thoroughly, I even took out my whole closet. I've done everything they say to do wash everything, heat everything. Right. But I haven't, I mean, I, Thoroughly, I've not seen one sign as far as a black speck or a casing, nothing. But one of the bites that I did have, they, they were on my abdomen and they were like 
uh, three in a row, you know, kind of like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, that's yeah. why I kind of figured that that might be what it is. Well, but yet I can't find them. I had a bug bite on me. I, uh, I talk about this. I think I've talked about it before. If not, I'm going to talk about it now. Um, but when I was, it's maybe three years ago, four years ago, I went out and did a flea treatment for a lady, and they were infested. I mean, th- this house, when I came out of the house, I had thousands of them. I mean, it was probably one of the mm-hmm. worst flea-infested houses I've ever been in before. And they bit me. Of course, they bite you all around the tops of your socks and stuff like fleas do. And I had probably three or four bites in a row. And so what I did was I, I, I had this idea. I said, I'm going to take a picture of this, and I'm going to post it online, and I'm going to see what people think. And so I posted it on actual pest control forum on Facebook. And I had out of, you know, several hundred people commented on the post, asked, you know, and over 50% of them said, oh, it's bed bugs. It's bed bugs. Go get that bed bug money. And I'm like, but they're not. In fact, I even got into an argument with a guy that I, 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 I told him, I said, it's not bed bugs, it's fleas. Well, how do you know it's fleas? I said, because it was on my body. And the fleas bit me and I saw them bite me. And so, you know, so the bites, yeah. it's easy to misidentify, even though you're getting the bites, the telltale, you know, three, four bites in a row. Um, and that's a common, that is a common sign that it is bed bugs because they feed, they, they get clumsy, they slip off, they bite again, they slip off, they bite again. And so that's why you get those, you know, bites in a row. But not every time is it that way. A mosquito can get into bed with you and bite you three or four times in a row. A flea can bite you three or four times in a row. A Or, or multiple fleas can bite you. You can get, um, you know, the, the thing is there are other bugs that will bite you. Now, no seums mm-hmm. are an actual biting fly. They're a type, like, well, mosquitoes are a biting fly and no seums are a biting fly, kind of like mosquitoes. They are super, super, super tiny. They can actually fit through a screen on a screen window. So if you have in-screen windows and you open your window to let the air blue breathe, in fact, it's really common this time of year with spring cleaning and people dusting the house. A lot of times they'll open the window to air out the house. And the noceums will actually fly through the screen, come in the window, and bite you. And so they can't, they are really small. They are so small that you can hardly see them, but they fly and they bite you just like mosquitoes. It is, if, if that's what they're having at the nursing home, it is a possibility that they're having that issue in the nursing home if they're already been diagnosed as having noceums. Um, but a noceum mm-hmm. is a category, you know, so basically people call mm-hmm. the little super teeny tiny mosquitoes, they call those noceums, they call those biting flies noceums. It's basically a bug that is so small that you can't see it, and yet it still bites you, if you understand what I'm saying. I yeah, don't think yeah, I you do. have That's why I say I'm bugs. scared to go over there. I, do, I don't want that, but I'm just like, I'm treating, I guess I'm just treating my house in case if I don't want to bring anything home from there. And I also, I've been bit, so I don't, I'm just like, so I guess just once a month I've been doing Crossfire because I've been watching all oh. your videos, everything, just to prevent you know, I, and again, I've not gone back into my bedroom where I got bit last, like, because I'm waiting to, to treat it one more time this weekend. And then like, I know I've got to be the bait and I like, I don't want to be the bait. <laughs> well, I don't me. think you have bed bugs. That's just the thing. I don't think you have okay. bed bugs. And Good. crossfire doesn't work on every bug in the same way. Um, and if, okay. it, if it's something else, there are other more effective pesticides than crossfire. Crossfire is only labeled for bed bugs. There are other chemicals out there that work better for other bugs. And so, you okay. know, even like a cypermethrin, permethrin, bifenthrin, um, you know, your synthetic pyrethroid family of pesticides, Alpine WSG is a really good multi use pesticide um, that will cover lots of different bugs that could be biting you. In fact, I use Alpine WSG for fleas. That's what I use. And it's really effective. And it's in fact, it's probably one of the most effective standalone products without using an IGR that I've ever used. They're really, really effective um, for things like fleas. And, you know, there are chemicals that you can use around your house. It, it, uh, where do you live? If you don't mind me asking, just about the t- state. I, no, 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 no. I'm in Tennessee. Okay. Well, you're not far from me. You're not far. But um, Tennessee's neighbor state. Um, but anyway, the, the thing is, is that 
in our season right now, if you're anywhere like me, we're going into springtime weather. It's supposed to be in the 80s over the weekend, and this is the kind of weather that mosquitoes breed in. In fact, I've already gone out mm-hmm. and, and, and treated homes and found mosquitoes all over the house already. Even though we had this cold snap over the last few days, it's still the, it is right in the, the thick of, of mosquito season. And in fact, I treated a bush. There was a bush growing right up next to the lady's house, and she had like some uh, some stuff all around the bush, roaches and stuff crawling up on the bush from the mulch beds and stuff. And I was treating it for the roaches, and the mosquitoes were everywhere, and they were those noceums, those super super teeny tiny noceums. And so it's a possibility that that's what's biting you. But if you've already treated twice, have you treated twice within the last two months, or how? When's the first mm-hmm. time you treated? Two months ago? Yeah. It was like two months ago, and then I did it last month. I guess I, I just had come to the conclusion I was going to do it every month until I don't get bit again. <laughs> There's also know. the um, possibility that you have ants. Um, yeah. Ants. So I had ants getting in my bedroom, and this was this probably maybe, let me see, it had to be at least four years ago. Um, my bed, now I did not have an actual bed. I had just the mattress and the box spring. And they were sitting on the floor in my bedroom, right up against the window of the old house I used to live in. And the ants were coming in that window. Now, ants travel at different times of the day. So they have, like, usually around breakfast time and at dinner time is when you're most likely to see ants in your house. And I was always gone. I usually leave, leave really early in the morning before breakfast. And then I come home, home late night or I go to bed early. And then I don't really ever see the ants crawling back and forth across the bed. But my wife would be at home, and they would crawl out, and they would bite her. And she would have three or four bites in a row, and it was the ants that were biting her. She never really noticed that they were ants biting her. But one day, my daughter came in and got me up over the weekend, and I got up, and I realized my aunt, my wife had ants crawling on her arm, and they were biting her on her arm. And they were those super teeny tiny ants, little acrobat ants, little, little teeny tiny uh, carpenter ants. Mm-hmm. And apparently, the window had, there had been a leak in the wall a long time ago before I was in the house. And the the window frame was damaged, and so the ants were actually living in the window frame. And so I had to, you know, I eliminated the ant problem, got rid of the ants and everything. But they were coming out and biting her right there where she laid, right next to the wall. And so that's always a possibility, too. I don't think you have bed bugs. If you're not finding in two months, I mean, it's been two months. If you're not finding casings or droppings or stains or anything that would even point to a bed bug except for bug bites then I would have to assume it's something else. Okay. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's driving me nuts because, and, and again, too, I was like, okay, where am I getting bit? Am I getting bit in my car? Am I getting bit when I, but then, then it was obvious that when I went to bed, you know, and woke up, I had been bitten. So it was like when I had gone to sleep. So that's when I was just like, oh, great. You know, but like I said, I have gone through this place with a fine tooth comb, flashlight, black light, you know, everything I could possibly do to even try, set out little, tra- you know, glue traps just to see if I can catch anything. And uh, um, nothing. Like, I don't see anything. I can't I, find anything. I think it's probably something else, and I would probably switch it, try to use a different pesticide. If I were you, I okay. would probably not use okay. Crossfire. I'd probably use, I mean, you could even go to Walmart and buy home defense and just see if that makes a difference because that's a different pesticide than what you've been using. And you don't necessarily have to tank the jug you've been mixing Crossfire because if you were to mix anything that's a repellent in the jug that you used with Crossfire, you can't use Crossfire in that anymore. It won't work. And so it would be better to go and buy something new and try with a different pesticide. Okay. Okay. Well, like I said, I was just freaking out because I don't want to bring anything home from the nursing home. I don't even want to go over there anymore because I'm just freaking out on any kind of bug now. Nursing homes and, are bad um, for lots of stuff. So, I used to do every nursing home in Bedford County except the county home. And it, it there, I mean, roaches, bed bugs, they get all kinds of things because people, they get moths, they get carpet beetles, they get, because if you think about it, the people that are moving in there, a lot of times they will bring in the one nursing home I used to do, they would bring in their chair, their recliner, like they would have their favorite recliner and they yeah. bring it into the nursing home. Or they would bring in a box full of like bed linens and stuff like that from their home where they were sleeping before because, you know, they want to try to make it feel as much like home as they can. 
Because it's a nursing home, it's not home, but they want to make it feel like home, and so they let them bring in their personal belongings, and a lot of times those personal belongings will have bugs in them. So, and my little baby sounds like he's yeah. having a fit upstairs. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to get off the phone with you so you can take care of your little family, but I, I so watch all your stuff, and I appreciate everything. Like I said, I just... I was like, crossfire, crossfire. I'm going to do crossfire on everything just because I don't know what's in here. So yeah. um, so I appreciate everything you do. All righty. You have a good night. All right. Thanks, Jason. Bye-bye. No problem. Bye. Can y'all hear him? I think you can. Yeah, you can hear him. You definitely can hear him. <laughs> I see the mic peeking when he yells and hollers upstairs. Let me turn down that mic a little bit. Yeah, he's he's crying up there. He's having a fit tonight. He's been teething. My little baby's been teething. So if you hear him, I'm sorry. All right, so let's see here. Um, how common are bed bugs in used cars? Um, I mean, it's possible. It depends on how long the car stayed in a lot, in a car lot. Uh, if it's, if it stayed in the car lot more than 10 to 18 months, it's probably not bed bugs. Have you ever seen a bed bug walk in the ceiling and drop on the bed? No, not, no, that usually doesn't happen. Spiders will do that, not bed bugs. I've had a bed bug problem for a few years. Okay, so I answered that question. Um, you had asked me, I answered it while I was on the phone because I saw that question and I answered it. Uh, if you're only having problems with bat bugs in the winter or bed bugs in the winter, typically that's a sign of bat bugs. Bat bugs come into the home. They are a bed bug. They are a variety of bed bug, a variant. They will come into the house when the bats migrate. So bats eat mosquitoes. So it's really common for bats to go into southern states and different places where they can get a hold of a mosquito and they won't be locally at your house. So if you have a winter, like here in Virginia, a lot of times the, the bats will actually move south and they will fly into where they can get food and they won't be, uh, you know, in your attic or in your, um, in your uh, fireplace, your, your, your flu. They'll sometimes will roost in the flu. And when the bats are no longer there, the bat bug, which like I said, is just like a bed bug. It can feed on humans too they come into the house and they start feeding on you because they need a host. They need a blood meal. So that's actually a really common thing to have happen if you're only having the bat bugs or the bed bugs in the wintertime. What works against flies coming from a neighbor's yard? It depends on what type of fly you're having. Um, different flies come for different reasons. It depends on what type of fly you're having in your home. Do people get used to bug bed bug bites? Some people don't react from bug bites at all. Um, let me see. So should should just be used on its own sprayer? Can't wash it out different pesticides. So I have somebody actually asked me on TikTok a question about crossfire. So in my business, I actually have a dedicated tank for Crossfire only. Because of the volume of bed bug jobs I do a month, I do so many that I just dedicate a tank to Crossfire alone. Um, and I don't, I mean, I, I do wash it out because if you don't, it'll get residue and it gets yucky and gunky and gross. So you do have to wash out even though it's just the one pesticide. I still wash it out all the time. Um... Thank you, Pepperidge Farm. I saw that you donated up there. You don't have to do that, but I did notice you up there when I was on the phone. Um, let me know if the sound is messed up. Pepperidge Farm says it was a little messed up. Um... I thought that was a stray cat in my basement. <laughs> He's the screamer. He is. Getting a lot of callbacks for swarming ants. I had a call today for swarming ants. I've treated with Alpine WSG, Max Force Fate. Any suggestions? All right, so the problem with swarming ants is swarming ants are reproductive ants. So they don't come out to gather food. 
So using bait on swarming ants won't work. The idea of a bait is that the ants take the bait back and feed it to the nest, but swarmers aren't workers, so they're not going to come out, take the bait back to the nest. You just spray and kill those. Um, workers have to be fed the bait. So if you're using Max Force or any other kind of gel bait, you need to feed that to actual worker ants. You need to give that to them so they take it back and feed it to the colony and eliminate the colony. Did you say if you put crossfire in a sprayer when you use something else, the crossfire won't work? Yes, I did say that. Um, the, the reason that that is is because, all right, so you have two different, two different types of pesticides. You have a repellent and you have a non-repellent. Most pesticides on the market are highly repellent to bugs. The idea in pest control is to, to re, like if you're going to treat the exterior of your home, you want to treat it with a repellent pesticide because you want the bugs that live outside to, to hit that barrier and be like, oh, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to go away because if I crawl through that chemical, I'm going to die. So that's the way a repellent works. That repels the bugs. The bugs don't crawl through it, they don't die from it, but they don't come in your house because they don't want to crawl across that barrier you've created. If you take a, uh, a pesticide and you mix it in a gallon sprayer and it's a repellent pesticide, then what you've done is you've, you've created a, a jug or a sprayer that now has a repellent residue in it. You can triple rinse the jug all you want. It's not ever going to get rid of all of the residue and it can taint your non-repellent pesticides. So what you want to do is you want to have one jug for repellents and one jug for non-repellents. And if you're going to switch from one pesticide to another, you want to rinse and triple rinse your, your container so that you don't have any residue from the old pesticide in there because not only do pest, uh, repellents and non-repellents kind of counteract each other, but they also, different chemicals will react differently with each other. You can, you can cause things like electrolysis and stuff like that to happen if you mix different chemicals together that really aren't designed to be mixed together. Did you, okay, um, early stage of bird bugs, do they have a 10 man shaped head? I am not sure what you're, what you're asking. Um, I think, oh yes, the call did have a crackly phone. That was the, that was the phone. So if y'all heard that crackling, that was from the phone line. That wasn't me. If you have a small box, like matchbox size, with the glue on the inside and a small hole cut in the top, will the bug go in and drop into the box? Probably not. So how would I treat the swarmer? Just spray them. Just kill them. Um, if they're coming out of a wall, you can dust the wall void. I've done that before. Um, that helps. They're still going to come out. This, the same way with swarming termites, they still come out. Whether you treat them or not, they still come out. They die everywhere, but they come out. Um, I'm treating for ants. I can't do the outside treatment or prevention since this is a condo. How likely is my indoor-only treatment to succeed? I'm spraying Alpine WSG on baseboards every three to four weeks. Uh, for ants, that's pretty effective on ants. I would try maybe some Samari ant bait or something like that. Maybe some... Uh, different ant baits along with your spray, but you don't want to get your bait in the spray. You don't want to accidentally spray your, your bait. So uh, you bait only places that you don't spray. I hope one day they figure out allure and egg killers of those effective red egg stuff. All right. Oh, roach. Oh, roach traps. Roach traps. Roach traps really... I mean, glue. Okay, so now understand. So... Sat12 was asking a question about how to catch a bug. Now, roaches are attracted to glue. Roaches eat glue. So if you've got a glue board, like a piece of, like the, what do you call it, like, like that white, let, let me show you what I'm talking about here. The best glue boards are, let's see, um, let's see if I can find it on Amazon. So let's see, let's go to my Amazon page. I might have it listed. Let's see, roaches. If not, I should. Um... Do I have roaches? Cockroach control. There we go. Uh, I don't, and I should. Let me see. 
Um, let me log in. That's not the right one. I'm looking past my microphone. And my microphone's in the way of my of my screen over here. All right. So let's see. Glue boards. This is a good one. Oh, whoa. Those are really good ones. Let me use those ones. Hold on a minute. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's do this. And do this. And we're going to add this to cockroach control. All right. So then if I go here and refresh it, there they are. All right. So these catch masters, these are amazing for cockroaches. Um, now these, what was that? Somebody following me. All right. So these right here, you've got to realize that the roaches, it's not really a control type thing. It's more of a monitor. So if you think you might have, let's say, cockroaches living in a microwave or a toaster oven or even a coffee pot, you could take one of these. You can either lay it flat underneath the device or you can fold it up like a box like this. If you think you might get the glue stuck to something that you don't want the glue on, you can actually make a little box like this and you can sit it up behind the microwave and they're not very expensive either. This is like a 36 count for, you know, 14 bucks, which is not bad. That's not a bad price. Like basically 50 cents a board is what they're charging you for them. Um, maybe a little bit, a little bit less than that. But, um, and so basically you, you get this one box and then, uh, or this one little piece, it has the ability to fold up to look like this little box right here. And you just take it and sit it behind a, uh, like behind your microwave, like where your microwave would sit up against the wall. You take it, fold it up into a little box and put it up behind the microwave and it'll catch a bit uh, the uh, cockroaches if they're living behind the microwave. So they are really good for that. So I, 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 I am really sorry. I misunderstood what you were asking me about glue boards and stuff, but those actually do work for cockroaches. But yes, Jennifer Lego is right. If you like the video and you like the information, be sure to hit the like and, and subscribe to it. Or you don't have to like the video. If you don't like it, dislike it. It doesn't matter to me. I want you to be honest if you don't like my video. Um, but let me see. Do they even have a dislike button? Somebody was telling me they don't even have a dislike button anymore. But um, I don't know. I, I don't ever like or dislike. Well, I'll do like videos, but I don't ever dislike videos. Because I know what it's like being a YouTuber and having people badmouth you and stuff. It's you know If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. You don't have to watch me if you don't like me. Uh, I love those Catchmaster glue traps for all crawlers. They're great. Yeah, they're good. They're good. And they're a good way to try to figure out what's getting in the house. And so let's say as a pest control technician, now I don't ever use them for pest control. The reason I don't use them for pest control is because you can't really control pests with a glue board. You'd be taking them, putting them up, taking them, putting them down, taking them up and putting them down, and you'd be going through tons of glue boards. And it's it really just produces more trash than it's really worth. But... You can put them down if you have a suspicion or if you're curious about what the customer is having problems with and you're trying to catch a bug for identification so then you can come back and you can properly assess the issue. So if someone has got what they think are cockroaches, this is a perfect example because I've had this happen before. If you have a customer who's getting oriental cockroaches in their house and you don't have a bug to identify but the customer insists they're cockroaches, they've got these black cockroaches in the house and so you assume that it's oriental cockroaches. Well, if you put a glue board down at the door in the basement and you catch ground beetles, <coughs> excuse me, I sneezed so hard, made my camera blurry. Um, if, uh, so ground beetles are black. In fact, I'll show you what a ground beetle looks like. They're real common. You may not even notice you have them, but you do. Ground beetle. See those little black beetles? That's a ground beetle. These are really common. People get these in their basements and they think they're cockroaches. Um, but they're not. And so that, that's a ground beetle. Oriental roach. That's an oriental cockroach. So you see how they're like, they're similar because they're black. The, the oriental cockroach is black when it gets old. And the ground beetle is black. 
And so people misidentify them all the time. People that don't understand, that's not a roach, that's a beetle. So what you could do is you could put those little glue boards down and you can, like in a basement or somewhere that they're having these roach problems, and you might catch ground beetles. If you're catching ground beetles, it's a different method to get rid of ground beetles than it is cockroaches. So where you may use some cockroach bait or something like that to get rid of the oriental roaches, you're not going to use that to get rid of ground beetles, and you could be using the completely wrong pesticide to get rid of your problem. So those little um, glue boards are actually really, really effective at uh, identification, properly identifying the bug you have issues with. And if you catch a bug on it and you don't know what it is, you could send that bug in to like an entomologist and they can tell you what it is and then you can try to attack the attack the problem. But yeah, and, and they do have apps now and stuff for that too, but you know, I'm very old school. Does YouTube give you the side eye if people dislike? No. No. All right. <clears throat> so here's the, here's the thing about YouTube videos. If if a person gives you, like, like my number one video, I don't think it will show anymore because I think they did actually take it off. So if you go to my YouTube videos and let's see, uh, sort by most popular. All right. This is my most popular video. This is the one most everybody's always seen. It's 201,000. Uh, Liberty Bibbity. Liberty Bibbity. It's a 200,000 200, views. Uh, it doesn't show you how many dislikes, but I got 1.1 thousand uh, likes. So if you go to the YouTube, let's see. I don't know how to do this and not show a bunch of crap. But let's do, let's find that video. So if I search for why heat treatments, there we go. There's the video. And then I go, oh, we got a call. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? Wow. My wow. name is Charlene. And <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't expect to get in just to talk to you. Well, yeah, of um, course. You called I, me. Uh, yeah, I've been watching your videos a lot, and I actually am getting treatments now from uh, pest control for, I just had the fifth treatment, and I'm very frustrated. <laughs> for what? A bed bugs? So, uh, yeah, okay. that's what they say they are, but I mean... They're still coming in my bed, but the last time he was here, I, I made him use Crossfire because he was not using Crossfire. Good. And I watched all your videos, and they were using the, the T1, the temperate, I guess. And I guess the problem that I have is they were coming every two weeks using the temperate, and right. I, was get, I was getting alive on the second week. So... Um, <laughs> yeah, because you have to apply temperate every two weeks because the label says every seven to ten days you have to treat it. So that's like once every two weeks you have to treat with temperate. So you don't have to do it every week. It, it, it should be like every two weeks that they come to do it. Well, every seven so to ten work. days. So you could do it once a week. But that's like okay. insane. Because, so, I mean, you think about all of the – all of the prep work you have to do in order to do a bed bug job, just as the customer, to have them come out every single week. I mean, you practically are living out of a box all the time. Okay. Well, I was listening to you, and I guess I'm I guess I'm concerned because they weren't treating the the porch that's attached. I mean, I have a a porch that's attached to the house. They weren't treating that. They're not treating the garage that, that's attached. And I hear all these stories and these videos about people that had to get their garage treated and yeah, they're not everything. doing every they're not doing everything that I think that they should be doing and I mean it's it's up to like two thousand dollars now. So um, should I stay with them or should I maybe go with somebody else? Two thousand dollars and they've treated your house five times. Do they charge you every time they come? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it sounds they like... Charge like <clears throat> go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
But sounds like they're just they're overcharging you. It sounds like they are charging you and charging you and charging you, but they're doing the exact same thing every single time and it's not working. If I come into a house and I use a pesticide and then I have to come back and do it again, I'm not going to use the same thing I used before that didn't work because that's that's called being an idiot. And I'm not going to do that um, because you would you would think you would learn from your mistake. You have to learn from your mistakes. And so when I do a job, like so today, I did a job, I did a follow-up. It's the first follow-up I've did in a couple months for bed bugs. And I don't do them very often, but I do have, you know, sometimes I have to go out and do a follow-up. And so I went out and I did a follow-up. I used Crossfire the first time. I used Crossfire today too, but I also used Alpine. And so I add an extra thing to it so that hopefully the idea is that if they are developing a resistance to Crossfire, just in case, there's another chemical there as well. So it's less likely that they're going to be immune to multiple pesticides. And so that's kind of how I approach a problem if I have to go back and do a follow-up. If I'm using, I mean, temperate has already been proven by many scientists. In fact, Denny Miller, she did a, uh, a study on temperate at, uh, at Virginia Tech that um, pointed to it, them actually developing a resistance to that years ago, uh, at least two years ago. They did a study. And so I don't use temperate for bed bugs at all. Now, for things like ants or cockroaches, I've used it. It works. It works really well on ants and cockroaches, but it's a metacloprid. It's a, it's a neonicotinoid just like Crossfire. But the problem is is that there aren't, there aren't enough ing active ingredients in temperate. There should be more actives in it. You need to mix something with it to make it work on bed bugs. But they're not going to do that. Okay, well... I did the first three with that, and then I was getting really upset because I was... Well, I when was, was the crossfire good. treatment done? Um, the crossfire is doing much better, um, much, much better because I'm getting a lot less coming in my bed, but they're still coming in. Um, when did they treat? The they treated two weeks ago. Okay, so um, you so should be getting an influx of bites then within from now until about a week from now. Because if it was two weeks ago that they treated with Crossfire, I'm noticing that, that people get bit. If it's an infestation to the point like, like what you're dealing with, where you've got resistance to other pesticides, you're not killing as many as you should be killing with the pesticides you're, you're applying, then typically there's an issue with, uh, it's an issue with resistance, so what you do is you come and use Crossfire. Usually in two to three weeks, you're going to get bit again because that's how long it takes for the eggs to hatch and for the, the nymph to come out and bite you the first time, if you understand what I'm saying. So you okay. should be getting bites right. now, but then they should stop within a week or so. They should stop. Okay. I am getting bites again. <laughs> so that's why I'm getting frustrated. I'm like, is nothing gonna work? You know, I you know, I don't know. So and he told me he didn't see one bug in in you know, everything that he did. So um but I found one on the couch the other night but it was dead because Well I mean, is he treating you know, the couch? Great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. They are. Yeah, so they're treating yeah, everything they but the porch and the couch and the uh, garage. Well, they started, because I asked them to, they started treating the, the port. Okay. But they haven't done the cause, and I guess that's what I'm concerned about, because it's still, it's just the door, and they're tiny, and I know what they do. And, um, and I guess another thing I wanted to ask you, did they burrow in your skin? No. <laughs> no, but chiggers will. Chiggers. Chiggers. Okay. Yeah, wow. chiggers will do that. You can get into a nest of chiggers outside, like tall grass or gardening and stuff. It's real common this time of year because people are getting their gardens ready for the spring. And uh, chiggers will get on you. Chiggers are miserable. Okay. Well, maybe that's what, what happened with, with one of them. But it's not. A, it wasn't like all the time. It was just like in the very beginning that this happened in the fall. Um, I've had these things since October. I treated them myself. Right. Uh, I bombed. I bombed the house like for two months, and they were they were totally gone for two months. But then they came back with a vengeance. Right. So I kept trying, and it wasn't doing anything. So I just I just got an exterminator. I mean, I'm like, I'm done. I can't do this. <laughs> right. Right. 
but I, but I mean, it's been three months and nothing yet. So it's, I mean, they're better, but they're they're still here. I mean, it's very frustrating. So you know, you don't get sleep. You don't, you know, you don't, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So well, I could give you a story uh, that I I did. This was last year. I actually treated a house for bed bugs, and the guy called me three weeks later, and he said, "Hey, man, you know, I'm getting bit still." And uh, I told him, well, so what I do is I go out and I charge an initial cost. And if I have to go back and do a follow-up, I charge half price if it's done within 50 days. And that's the way that I do my pricing for bed bugs. And I told him, I said, well, it's only been three weeks. If you will wait two more weeks, you've got, you've got the time, you know, to still get the, the, the deal that I'm going to give you. And so I would wait at least two more weeks. And just see what happens. And it got to about day 40, 42. And I called him myself just to check up on him. And he said, nope, I hadn't gotten any more bites. You were right. I waited one more week and they went away. And so he just needed that little bit of extra time. And like I said, if, you, if you're dealing with a chemical resistant strain of bed bugs, like I said, the ones that are resistant to temperate, basically they came and they did the crossfire treatment. You have to treat that as treatment number one. Honestly. Because... That's the only one that's worked. <laughs> that's the only one that you're getting results with is what they have done just recently. Everything before that was basically a waste, if you get what I'm saying. Exactly. But they charged me. Like, oh, yeah, they charged that- you for it. Yeah, they charged you for it because they don't know any better. And and that's honestly the truth. They really don't know any better. Um, I I didn't use Crossfire. Crossfire has been out for about five, six years before I even started using it. And I was told by another exterminator to use it. People need to tell their exterminator to use it and tell them, I'm not going to give you my money if, unless you do. And people will start to do what the customer wants. Because ultimately, if you're business oriented and you understand how business works, the customer is always right. And the customer will get their way eventually. And, and once everybody starts using it, and the industry starts pushing towards these better pesticides that have been that that, that they're better, they're just more superior. Then people will stop having bed bug problems. But like I said, it's hard when you're stuck using the same thing and have used it and it's worked before. Tempered used to work. It used to work. It just doesn't work anymore, or it doesn't work most of the time. So they're just not willing to change. So basically, I was ripped off for the first, you know. Two months. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically, yeah. You paid for something that, like I said, the exterminator didn't know any better. He, I, I, I will play the devil's advocate and tell you that more than likely they did not know better. They did not know that there are better options out there, and I didn't know. I was there once. I understand what it's like. I, like I said, I run my pest control business, and I don't like changing my chemicals either. I hated when they took diazinon off the market. I despised when they took Durazban off the market. I said I can't. I couldn't stand it. I had to change it. I had to use something new. But I used it all the way up until the day they told me I couldn't. You know, I was real stubborn. I didn't want to switch. And so I understand what it's like. You know, like I said, to play devil's advocate. You know, they may just not know any better. Because it okay, is a game the, in, pest, in pest control. It really is. It's like a chess game. Okay, and I understand that. But it's you know, I'm super sensitive. I'm elderly, I and I was definitely definitely sick for those couple months that they were treating with something that wasn't even working and I knew it wasn't working um, but it's like why did I have to tell them what to use or to get mad at them and say look <laughs> I want you to try this because I've been all over the internet and this guy seems to know what he's talking about would you please try this and I made him, he says, I can't believe it was like another guy with the same company. He says, I can't believe he didn't use Crossfire first. Yeah, So I guess they right. sent somebody real He says, uh, he says he, he, they sent somebody young that didn't know what he was doing or that just, you know, was trying this other stuff, this temper. So, but, you know, I have to pay for it and I had to suffer. Um, and I have very sensitive skin and I'm like you, you know, bites really, really bother me. I have allergic reactions, uh, so bad sometimes that I have to go to the hospital. So it's just, it's just not, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just frustrated. <laughs> I understand. But hopefully, 
hopefully this crossfire is working then. Are you telling me that it's actually working? <laughs> well, it sounds like it is. You're telling me that it's working. You said that you're getting better results, so I would think it is. Okay. Even though I'm still getting, you know, what I do is, is hysterical. I come and I fake them out. I lay in bed for like two hours, get them on my bed. I catch them, and the only thing, the, the only way that I can kill them is by keeping a a cup of water, I catch them, I put them in the water and drown them because they can't swim. So I drown them. And I do that every night so I can at least get a little bit of sleep, if that makes any sense. Right. <laughs> and I, I probably catch um, anywhere from, I want to say, maybe 10 now, where it used to be 50 a night. So is that, is that better? Like yeah, that sounds better to me. That's at least, you know, what, 40, well, not 40, what do you call it, 80% reduction? That's 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 okay. better. But it's still not what I would, I mean, I, not, not what I would go strive for. I would strive for total elimination. That's what I like to do. I like to kill them all, leave no survivors. But, um, you know, it really bothers me if I have to go back and do a follow-up. But it does happen. You know, even with me, it, it happens from time to time, and you have to go and you have to follow up. And, you know, I mean, if you have to, you can always buy Crossfire yourself if you don't want to pay anybody else to do it. But you may want to use a different company. You know, the guy you talked to before that, that right out said he can't believe they didn't use it first, that's the guy I would go with. I wouldn't go with the other company anymore. Okay, okay. But they're then just, I they have don't, to they're not out. educated enough. The problem is, is that in pest control, all right, you could get a deal. Temperate's cheap. You, you, to be honest with you, temperate is really cheap. You can get deals at the beginning of the season on pre pesticides like temperate from your from your sales rep. Dirt, cheap. I mean, you can get gallons of it, and then you're only having to mix a few ounces to a gallon of water. So it lasts for, you know, a couple of years. And... And it's all you've got, and it's all you're going to use because it's cheap and because you saved money. And But Crossfire is never like that. Crossfire is always expensive. It is really, really expensive pesticide, but it works. The thing is, is, is the customer will pay you to kill their bugs. That is what they will do. And like you're saying, you're willing to pay people just to get rid of the problem. You've paid over $2,000 already to get rid of this problem. It isn't about the money. It's about killing the bugs. And if you could have just killed the bugs the first time, you wouldn't be having this problem. You wouldn't be constantly having to call them back out over and over and over. If they had done their homework, they would have known that temperate doesn't work on bed bugs anymore. They need to switch to something else. And I have one more question, and I know you're busy. Yes, ma'am. Um, we think that there was some furniture brought in from my daughter for her business because she, she purchased some chairs from a, uh, another business. Okay. So, but I don't, you know, she said it was a very wealthy business and she doesn't think that we brought them in, but they keep insisting that that's what, that's how I got them. It doesn't really matter how I got them. It's just, I want to get rid of them. <laughs> right. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. I and you might care. have brought them in on the furniture. Usually, as an exterminator, you can kind of see. You can usually tell where ground zero is, so to speak. It's the spot with the most eggs. It's the spot with the most activity. Um, you know, beds that don't have but maybe one or two bed bugs, but then you see that they there's like 10 or 15 on a couch. You assume they came from the couch. Or whoever sat on the couch brought them in, and that's where they infested. Okay, okay. Well, I have all brand new furniture in, in my living room, you know, and I have only two bedrooms and they're brand new mattresses. So again, I don't know how they came in or how they got here. I just, you know, I, and the other thing is, is they're telling me that I should throw the, my daughter's trying to tell me throw the furniture away, but maybe they're, they just are not leaving, but if they're treating them, they should, they should be okay. Right. Hope so. <laughs> I'm not. I don't have a lot of. I don't have a lot of uh, trust in the company that you're dealing with. So you don't think they're doing? They're doing a good job. No, so I, don't. I should go. So with I don't think they're doing a good anyone job because they're not changing. They're not willing to change what they're doing to fix the problem unless you beg them to do it. And that's not the way it works. As an exterminator, it should bother you if you're not killing your customer's bug problem. If you're not taking care of the problem, it should bother you. 
and you should fix it. You should research. You should fix it. That's what I do. If I have, if I go into a house that has ants, this is a good example because bed bugs don't really cause me a problem. But if I go into a house and they have ants and they continue to have ants month after month after month after month, that really eats me up. And I go in and I research and I try to figure out what am I doing wrong? What is not working? And I figure it out. And I change my chemical and I change my method and eventually I get the problem fixed. That's what you're supposed to do. It's a problem solving issue. And if they have an issue solving problems, then they don't need your money. Personally. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate your help. Anytime. I'm, a, I'm very, very, I, I, I will hold an exterminator's feet to the fire in a heartbeat. I have no problem telling them, you know, I had a guy call me on the phone and told me they said, uh, you, they, they, well, one, one of my customers had mice and she called me because she fired them because they weren't killing her mice. And so I went out to the house. It's a vacation rental home and she's got to kill the mice. She can't be renting your home out to people and having mice in your house. And so I went out to the house. I baited for the mice and I killed the mice. And then I got a call. The following month, this was in Wintergreen, a, a vacation place in, in, in Virginia, and they called the, 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 uh, a guy called me, and he said, hey, do you service Wintergreen? And I said, yeah, I do. And, and I was like, did you want service today? Because I'm supposed to be out there today. And he's like, no, 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 I work with so-and-so, and I found your uh, bait station inside her house. And I said, yeah, well, that's because she fired you because you weren't able to kill the rats. And that's exactly what I told him. I said, she, she told me she fired you because you couldn't kill her mice and her rats. So I came in there and I put my stuff out because I know how to kill them. And he was real nice and real polite and everything, but I didn't think about it until I hung up the phone. I was like, I was probably a little mean to him because I right out told him. I'm like, yeah, she fired you because you suck. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> but yeah, you know, that's yeah. what they need to hear. They need to hear that their method is not right. It's not working, and you've got to complain. You've, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You've got to tell those people you are doing this wrong. And if nobody tells them, they'll never change. And then it's not just you they're taking money from. They're taking money from tens, maybe even hundreds of other people because they're not doing it correctly. They're not, they're not doing it right. They need to realize that what they're doing no longer works. Yeah, I mean, once I heard that that shepherd was only good, was only working for a week, and then I was suffering, and they were biting me like crazy, I was like so upset. I'm like, no, I'm telling them today, I want to, I want you to change with the crossfire, and that's it. I don't want to hear right. it. But just don't come. Don't even come. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, you have a really so good thank- night. I appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. I, hey, keep those videos. I, oh, I yeah, chuckle always. and I enjoy. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Oh, I'm sorry for the crackling. I think it's actually Skype. So that was a really crackly call too. And I think there's a problem with feedback through the Skype uh, app. They've got this new beta version that is doing, and I don't know why it's doing this. Um, I think maybe it's the actual app itself. I'm going to close it down and reopen it. Um, but if I can't get that to fix, I may not be able to do calls tonight. I may have to wait until next week to try to do better calls because that absolutely is annoying me, and I heard it that time. So let me um, let me do a Skype search. Because I have the Skype app, and then I have actually the Skype like program and so i'll run the program this time and we'll see if that works better because it is two different things so anyway i am going to try to get to everybody's questions i the phone is ringing off the hook tonight uh oh man there's a lot of stuff up here In fact, if you have a question I haven't asked, I haven't answered yet, just ask it again. Just repeat it. I don't mind. I'm not one of these people that says, please don't repeat your question because a lot of times I just don't see it. So if you have any questions that you've asked and and I haven't answered it, don't don't hesitate. You're not being rude. I want to see the question again. Um, Oh, somebody did ask about likes and dislikes, and that's what I was going over. So I have a video so if i go to my content 
and I filter by views. Um, all right. So let's see if I can show you this. I don't show this very often, but if I go here, there you go. All right, so this is my video. This is my, it's got 200,000, uh, over 200,000 views. It's the only video on my channel that has over 200,000 views. But if you scroll over and you look over here, now this is what I see. I see this. No one else sees this because YouTube took away the like and dislike button. But this is right here. This is my, this is the YouTube studio. This is where I look at all the analytics for all my videos and everything like that. So this is why heat treatments don't work on bed bugs. It's a public video. Monetization is on. All right. But if you go over here, likes versus dislikes, there's my likes and dislikes. So let me move this over so you guys can see because I, 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 don't mind, I don't mind showing people this. I've got 1,158 likes and 647 dislikes. So about half of the people who uh, or half half of the people that like the don't like it whatever that's so that shows me uh, personally how many people like or dislike my video the point is with YouTube so like I said somebody had asked the reason I showed that is because someone actually asked if likes and dislikes matter they don't uh, I mean they do they do matter um, because what happens is when you like a video it shows that there is interaction. If you dislike the video, it shows that there is interaction. YouTube wants you to interact with the video. If you like the video, if you dislike the video, if you comment on the video, if you share the video, that's all interactions with the video and it shows YouTube that you're interested in the video enough to push a button. And that's what they want to see. So when you like or dislike my videos, it does basically the same thing. And so when I tell people like or dislike, I don't care either one. I mean, I would like it if you'd like my content. I make this content for you. You don't have to like it. But I like it if you like it. <laughs> you know, it makes me feel better about myself if you like my videos. It boosts my ego. But, you know, if you don't like it, don't like it. You know, but either way, the really, the honestly, the one thing that you can do that if you really don't like my videos and you really don't want to, you know, support the channel, and you think what I do is crap and you don't want to see my videos anymore, then block me. That's what you need to do. That shows YouTube that you really don't like my content, and that's what you have to do, uh, is block my channel. That's going to, you know, drop me from your algorithm. That's what you need to do, if, if that's really, you know, what you want to do. Um, so, and that goes the same for TikTok, too, you know, the people on TikTok. But yeah, thumbs me up. It, it, it makes me feel better. <laughs> I like thumbs up. Um, are the liquid termite treatments toxic to dogs and chickens? It depends on what chemical you're using. Um, do various bird bird bed bat, backs? I'm, I'm not sure. That, I don't know what that means. Jason, did you ever make a video using a repellent on roaches? No, I don't use repellents for roaches. Um, I don't think repellents work as well as non-repellents. Non-repellents work better. Pepperidge Farm, learning about bat bugs made me feel a whole lot different about Batman. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's great. Where's Rory? Finding him. Where is he? Upstairs. He's playing his boot on his switch. Oh man, I was going to tell him that joke. He'd like that joke. That's funny. Learning about bat bugs made him feel a whole lot different about Batman. That's good. I love that. That's a great joke. I'm gonna remember that one. How long? I'm not sure what that question is either. Some of these questions I don't understand. If I respray with a new sprayer used with only Crossfire, where I had used an old sprayer with Ortho, you need to use a new sprayer. Yeah, you need to use a new sprayer. Don't mix it in a sprayer you use Ortho with. Um. What's the value of paying a pro if you still have to tell them what to do? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. They're a professional for a reason. You know, I'm a professional.
because I research. It, pest control is a field that constantly changes. It's an always evolving field. They took DDT away from us back in the 70s. A lot of people like to say, well, you know, if DDT were still here, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, bed bugs had already developed a resistance to DDT when they took it off the market. The bed bugs were already starting to adapt. They do adapt. Bed bugs, cockroaches, bugs adapt to pesticides. So in order to combat the, addition, the issue of resistance, you have to be able to change your pesticides. You have to be willing to step back away from yourself and look at the situation and go, this is just not working anymore. Yeah, it used to work. It was amazing. It was a great product. But now it doesn't work anymore. Let me look at what other people are doing. Let's see what other people are using that's successful. Let me try that. Because I don't mind asking other exterminators. I, I ask people all the time on Facebook, on different different uh, billboards and, 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 and you know groups and stuff I'm a member of, Reddit and stuff. I have absolutely no problem asking people, well, what are you doing now? What, what have you been doing that's, that's giving you success for bed bugs? Maybe I can stop using Crossfire. Maybe I can use something different. Maybe Crossfire, while I think it's a pretty good pesticide, maybe there's something better. And you should always try to strive to be better at what you do. If you strive to be better at what you do, that makes you the best. That's how you become the best, is by continuing to improve yourself. And you can't just be satisfied with what works today, because what works today may not work tomorrow. And that's true pest control. That is how pest control really is. It, it, that's why when you go to Walmart and you buy a roach killer and you bring it home to kill roaches, it doesn't kill roaches. Because the pesticide used to kill roaches. It still has roaches on the label. The label hasn't changed. But the, the roaches have adapted. They have evolved into... They, they, basically what you're doing is you are eliminating the roaches that, are res that aren't that are resistant to the chemical. You have a, uh, a strain of bed bug, a, a, a genetic strain of bed bug that either has a thicker exoskeleton or they're just chemically immune somewhat to the pesticide you're using. And if you use something different, then you hopefully will bypass that immunity. You know, so that's why you have to constantly change your chemicals all the time. You can all, never use the same thing all the time. Uh, since I've been in business for myself, I've used two different things for bed. Three. F no. Three. Four. 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 Four different pesticides for bed bugs. I've used probably ten different things for cockroaches. Uh, fleas. Two or three different things for fleas. Um, they, always. I've, I haven't used the same thing for six years. I've been only in business for myself for six years. But... I've used something different in that six-year period. I've always changed my chemicals. I have no problem doing that. How do you take care... Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah. How do you take care of sewer roaches that keep coming up after using Bifenthrin for three months? Um, switch and use something different. That's, that's a good example of switch and use a different pesticide. If you're using Bifenthrin, try using Demon Max. Try using... Alpine WSG. Alpine works good on roaches. Alpine's really good on roaches. Uh, I wish they would figure out a synthetic pyrethroid, a synthetic pheromone, lure an egg killing poison that could take back to the walls and have for the roaches. We'll see. Um, bed bugs don't feed each other and roaches don't feed each other either. So those don't work on those bugs. It works on ants, but not roaches and bed bugs. Red roaches and bed bugs don't take care of each other. They, they, they're all one for all, all for one. Yeah, they just one for each other. That's all. They just take care of each other. They themselves. They take care of themselves. I'm gonna do, I have decided to do a TikTok. So you guys need to follow my TikTok. But I am gonna do a TikTok. I haven't done a dramatization in a very long time. But I am going to do a TikTok video, and I'm looking at my wife for her approval, of Batman with bat bugs. That's going to be great. I'm going to do that. Because I got a Batman mask somewhere around here. I thought I had it here. I, I think could. it might be up in your dresser right here. I thought it was maybe right here. Oh, uh, maybe not. I used to have it right here on my desk, and I used to wear it all the time with the kids. But 
Yep, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Look forward to it. I'm gonna do it. That'll be stupid hilarious. It'll be so cringy. It'll be awesome. I did a video one time, a dramatization of, uh, uh, let me see. Where is that? It's on here somewhere. Oh, gosh, it's awful. Maybe it's on TikTok. Let's see if we can find it. Let's look together. All right, TikTok. Doc, okay. Right there. And is he crying? Do you get him to start rocking him up or that? Oh, the baby's awake again. Let me see where I have so many TikToks. I guess, I guess you're going to have to try to find it, because I don't know where it is now, but there is a TikTok video in there of me being stupid. There's a lot of those. Man, this is going to bug me now. That's a good pun. Oh well, I couldn't find it. Y'all have to go find it. Sorry about that. It's there. It's there. Um, I was able to get ready bed bugs with your instruction. Uh, I meant, uh, we'll crossfire work over that. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so if you use the chemical like ortho home defense or something like that. Um, I would give it at least a month, maybe a month and a half, and then I would use Crossfire. It's it's not easy to clean up pesticide residue. That's why I said that. It's easier to just wait a few weeks and then apply Crossfire. I had an issue with springtails, but thanks to Jason, I think they're all gone. I put granules outside. Uh, I have an issue with spring rolls. <laughs> I just don't like them. <laughs> I like spring rolls. Spring rolls. Are, I See, I like spring rolls because they're typically vegan, and I can eat those, and I like them. You dip them in duck sauce. What you do is you get you a spring roll, and you, I like to dip a little bit in soy sauce and then dip it a lot in duck sauce. That's what I like. They're, I like spring rolls. I enjoy spring rolls. But... I get the vegan ones. It's just vegetables. Just cabbage and stuff in them. Wood roaches are not treated the same as regular roaches. So regular roaches, as in German cockroaches, wood roaches, a lot of people confuse wood roaches. So a wood roach, a Pennsylvania wood roach looks like this. All right? This is a wood roach. The, it has wings. They fly like a moth. They fly. All right? They will fly at you and land on you and crawl on you. They will come out in the middle of the daylight. They're not afraid of light at all. Uh, oriental cockroach, this one, this is an oriental cockroach, they don't like the light. They, they hide from the light. You turn the light on, they run from it. If your roaches will not come out in the light, they are not wood roaches. They are something else. Um, so I'll, I'll answer that right away because a lot of people with... Wood roaches don't, they, they think an oriental cockroach is a wood roach, but they're not. They're different. So, but this is a wood roach. This is an actual Pennsylvania wood roach. But they're, they're they, uh, you don't treat them the same. You just treat around the windows and doors outside. Um, if you've got a porch light that you leave on at night, stop. Turn it off because the wood roaches are coming to the light. They are attracted to the light like a moth is to a flame. They like to come out in the light. And, and so if you turn the lights off, the wood roaches leave your house alone. But they typically only come in usually around like summertime is usually when they're really bad. But they'll fly to the house and come in. Wood roaches cannot breed inside your home. 
they lay their eggs in rotting and decaying wood. So unless you've got a big, huge pile of mulch in the middle of your front you know, living room, you're not going to have wood roaches breeding in the house. They're not going to lay eggs in the house. They lay eggs outside. They don't want to be in the house. They want to be outside. So that's one thing you need to understand about wood roaches. Wood roach is an easy roach to kill. They're the easiest one to get rid of. You could treat around dust to dawn lights. You could treat around your porch lights and stuff. And when the wood roaches come to the house and crawl across the surface, they die. But they don't breed disease or anything like that. Not like Orientals and, and German roaches do. When talking to the last caller, did you mean you mixed Alpine and Crossfire in the same sprayer? No, I use two separate sprayers. I have one for Alpine and one for Crossfire. I don't mix the two. Um, does Onslaught Trap Step work for bed bugs? No. I mean, it's not, nothing works as good as Crossfire. I will put it out there. I'll say it. There is no pesticide on the market, in my opinion, that works as good as Crossfire. All right? It just isn't. Um, a lot of people do use Onslaught, and they use, um, I can't remember what the other thing is they use, but they do, and they like it, but I don't. I like Crossfire. I use it. It's great. That's what I use. I actually don't even know if I like them. <laughs> We're coming across a camel spider. I Camelback crickets. So, I've only ever done one video on camelback crickets. Ever. It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. So, if you go to my YouTube channel and you search camel. Oh, I had two. Well, no, I got one. It's just one. I don't know why that one came up. Oh, that's because that's a playlist. But yeah, so I did a, see, uh, uh, a series back four years ago when I was still young. And I did a What Is That Bug Camel Crickets. And I showed what camel crickets are. It has 1.9 thousand views. It's hardly any views at all. A four-year-old video. But I go over camel crickets. So, there you go. I do have camel crickets up there. Oh, excuse me, I'm tired. Can you use animal blood in a type of contraption to attract bed bugs? Nope, you cannot. They're not attracted to blood. They're attracted to CO2 and heat signatures given off by a human being. If you lay in the bedroom and you've got a cat in the bed with you, the bed bugs are going to bite you. They're not going to bite the cat because they're attracted to you. They're not attracted to the cat. Oh, man. Oh, I'm exhausted. This has been a rough week. I have worked so much this week. I had one day, well, that was actually towards the end of last week, that actually... Last Thursday, I wasn't here. And the Thursday before, I wasn't here either. Because I had to work. I worked from like 9.30 until 11. I didn't get home until after 11. But I've just, I mean 9.30 at night. But I also worked that whole day too. So I'm just, I'm just run down, man. This is a time of year I work all the time. Exterminators understand. This is the time of year you work a lot. Oh, sorry, I've, I'm going through a yawn series here. There's Pepperidge again with ten bucks. You don't have to keep. You just you just want to just hand me your wallet. You just hand me your wallet if you want to just hand it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy man. I appreciate it. Thank you though. But yeah, it's been a buggy year. It's a buggy, buggy, buggy year. Buggy year here in Virginia, too. The weather hasn't helped at all. So. Yep. I'm actually probably going to head on to bed. Truthfully. I'm exhausted. Uh, you guys have a really great night. I appreciate everybody that shows up, talks to me, puts up with my blah, 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 blah run another mouth. So, 
I hope everybody has a good weekend. I hope y'all enjoy your weekend. And I got two videos uh, just to let you know. I have two that I filmed. I still have to edit them. I have one on carpet beetles. I've actually got. I'm gonna do one. So I've got for those that are that are that are curious. So on my channel, if you go to the home page of my channel and you click subscribe up here, and then you go down, you go to playlists. All right. I have a playlist, three to four step solution that anyone could do. So these are really short videos. I don't think any of them are longer than 20 minutes. Uh, most of them are, are under 15. Some of them are 10 minute long. So if you go to this channel, this thing, and you look at the playlist over here. So the first video is how to get rid of bed bugs guaranteed, how to get rid of German cockroaches, uh, springtails, fleas, centipedes, bird mites, uh, centipedes and millipedes, bird mites, uh, flies, wasps, ladybugs, spiders, cockroaches, ants, crickets. This is general pest control. And then I've got one for spiders, and then I've got one for ants. All right? So I'm going to I'm gonna make a new one. I haven't done one for this, this playlist in a really long time, but I'm going to add um, carpet beetles to that list. So I've had a lot of people ask me for videos on carpet beetles because... Carpet beetles cause a similar outbreak um, to bed bugs. And in fact, they get misidentified as bed bugs. So I'm actually going to do a carpet beetle, how to get rid of carpet beetles, um, and, and explain exactly what type of pesticides to use, how to mix the pesticides, and where to apply them to try to get rid of carpet beetles. Because carpet beetles are a problem. I actually just did a house this morning for carpet beetles where they were actually eating the woman's wool. She has woolen sweaters and woolen coats, like they like you know old wool coats. And the carpet beetles are getting in and eating holes in her jackets. And so I thought it would be a good idea to do a carpet beetle video. So I've recorded it. I just haven't edited it yet. And I've got one on cockroaches that I'm going to release a new one on cockroaches. So um, I'm going to put up a poll on the community side of the channel so if you're not not familiar with how it works if you go to my channel and you you go up here and after you click subscribe of course you go over to where it says community and so i've got polls that i put up all right so this is the poll that i did from nine days ago it's this week i won't be able to stream live this is talking about thursday last week uh would you rather me live stream tonight and upload the video of the week, Thursday, or upload today and live stream next week. So the alt, the overall consensus was to upload Tuesday my video and then live stream today, which is what I did. And then, uh, of course, I have other polls uh, for videos. Uh, two weeks ago, I asked if people would rather have when a bed bug is the bed bug or when bug bugs kill, and I let people vote on that. And the bed bugs kill made number one. And the second, this was one that I did just Tuesday. This is one that just went live Tuesday. And so if you're curious, I'm going to put up another poll asking which video you'd like to see come Tuesday. And, and what I've been doing is I have been putting the video that you want to see at the head of the line. So basically I edit that one first because it's really hard for me to find the time to edit two videos in one night. And so I edit one video at a time. And then whenever I get time to edit another one, I put the second one up. So they're both going to go up, both options. It's just, what do you want to see first? So I'm going to do those. I'm probably going to go and edit them tonight while the baby, because the baby's been kind of fussy and he's not really wanting to go to sleep. So I'll probably sit up there with my wife and edit a video. But, um, but anyway, like the channel, subscribe, like the video, follow me, whatever you need to do. Uh, if you're on TikTok, follow me. So you can keep up on my videos. I do a lot of crazy things on TikTok, though. A lot more funny stuff. And I use music that you can't use on YouTube because, ooh, copyright strikes. So anyway, y'all have a real great night. I really appreciate it. And uh, let me just check these last few comments because I have to. Um, I did not see the picture of a cake, Jennifer. Um, maybe she did show me, but I don't remember. I, I have a hard time remembering everything. Um... Let's see. Yep. Yeah, so, yes, he is teething. He is teething. And the amber necklace is not working. So, we'll see what happens with the baby. 
Y'all have a great night. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. I gotta turn off my mic.